Hi. Welcome to the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, the largest institution in the United States devoted to the arts, sciences, and artists of movie making. The Academy Museum of Motion Pictures acknowledges the Tongva people as the traditional caretakers of the water and land on which we program, curate, educate, convene, and discuss. We honor and respect Tongva ancestors and the Tongva community today, which continue to nurture this land and water through traditional practice, activism, art, and education. We also acknowledge their continued, to, continued work to safeguard cultural resources. My name is Christina Ibarra. I am the Director of Education and Public Engagement here at the museum. Thank you for joining us in our David Geffen Theater for our makeup and hairstyling conversation presented as part of our nominee programs. Nominee programs support is provided by Clarendale and Domain Clarence Dillon, the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures official wines. Additional support for nominee programs provided by Delta Airlines. Academy Museum film programming is generously funded by the Richard Roth Foundation. Nominee programs brought select screenings of Academy Award nominated shorts and panels with Academy Award nominated filmmakers in the lead up to the 96 Oscars to the Academy Museum for the Public. Today's makeup and hairstyling program caps off a series of 11 panels and three activations where we welcomed over 7,000 visitors to the museum specifically for these programs. I want to be sure to thank some of the many teams that worked to make this Oscar season at the museum such a success. Our facilities and security teams, theater operations and project projectionists, visitor experience, events, education, film programs, and so many more of our colleagues. I thank you all. I would also like to thank our ASL interpreters who will be assisting us today. Their names are Andrea Lust and Abby Woolard. This is a, yes, please. This has also been a true partnership with member relations and award administration at the Academy Museum, excuse me, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Thank you to each member of your team. But, excuse me. But the fun is not over. Please join us tomorrow for Oscars Night at the Museum, where we, we, we will be screening the ceremony right here in our beautiful theater. And beginning March 14th, join us for screenings of a selection of this year's winning films. Get your tickets on academymuseum.org. Before we begin our program, please silence, darken, and stow your mobile devices, including phones and smartwatches. Now please help me welcome to the stage Michael Benedict, Associate Director of Member Relations and Awards Administration at the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. Thank you. Hello everybody, good morning. Uh, welcome to the Oscar season makeup and hairstyling symposium. Uh, this is the, actually the final Oscar season event this week, uh, but man, you all are all in for a treat. Uh, this is actually the 11th event this week at the, muse at the museum celebrating Oscar season. So uh, I wanna thank all the staff behind the scenes. None of this is possible without you. Uh, from the projectionist way up there, hi guys, uh, to the theater staff outside, to my fellow uh, membership colleagues, thank you for everything you do. Um, I also want to give a special shout out to my partners in crime, uh, Lauren McPhee and Billy McClellan. Thank you for everything you do year round. Um, you know I can't do this alone, so you know how much I appreciate you both. Um, as I'm looking around, there's a, a lot of Academy members in the audience. So uh, thank you for, for coming out and supporting your fellow artists. I, I gotta say on a personal note, I, I love makeup and hairstyling. I don't know how to make up and or hairstyle, obviously, but I, I, I love looking at it. Uh, as a kid, I, I was obsessed watching monster movies and, and seeing all these, these interesting and crazy monster designs. And it was really my first introduction to what film is. So I, I pinch myself every day that, that I get to do this and, and interact with such geniuses. 
it's absolutely stunning what you all do. And, and being so good at your craft is why you are an Academy member. You are the experts who uphold the highest standards in filmmaking. It's because of you that the Oscar is the most coveted film award in the world. So thank you, Academy members, for your dedication and for your contributions to cinema. Your work will live on for generations, and you should be so incredibly proud of that. Thank you for what you do, because it certainly inspired a young kid watching monster movies. All righty, all righty. <laughs> so I'm actually here to introduce the makeup and hairstyling branch governors, who will also be your moderators for the event. I work with the governors on all things Academy business, and I gotta say, I got really lucky with these three. Uh, they are so hardworking, and they care so deeply about their craft and their fellow members. Um, I just wanna briefly tell you a little bit about each one because they're crazy talented. Uh, first is uh, Linda Flowers. Uh, Linda is in her fourth year as governor. She's an accomplished hair designer who, whose credits include The Social Network, Five Fast and Furious movies, There Will Be Blood, The Hunger Games, and a little movie called Spider-Man No Way Home. Linda is one of the best in the business, but she is also so caring, and she has such a warm presence whenever she is around. Uh, aside from her talent and kindness, her dog Ronin is the cutest thing you will ever see. I have to shout out the dog. So uh, <laughs> thank you for everything you do, Linda Flowers. So next up is Howard Berger. <laughs> We all know Howard. Howard is the vice chair of the branch. Howard uh, won an Oscar for his makeup work on the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. And then he was nominated again for the movie Hitchcock. Some of his other feature credits include, yeah, yeah Hitchcock, yeah. <laughs> Some of his other feature credits include Kill Bill, Volumes 1 and 2, Lone Survivor, and From Dusk Till Dawn. He's also the co-author of the book, Masters of Makeup Effects. If you like events like this, you will love that book. He is simply amazing and devoted. I don't know when he finds time to sleep, but he's the absolute best and most importantly, a decent and kind person. Thank you, Howard. <laughs> and finally, uh, this year's makeup and hairstyling branch chair, Mr. Bill Corso. So uh, Bill won an Academy Award for his work on Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, and he has also been nominated for the movies Click and Foxcatcher. Some of his other credits include Deadpool 1 and 2, and 3, coming soon, uh, Kong Skull Island, and Star Wars The Force Awakens. He's currently working on the, a Michael Jackson biopic. And uh, with all that, that's just the peak of the iceberg. If, if you Google this man's work, you'll be blown away. Uh, Bill is a fantastic leader and a problem solver. He's incredibly creative and brilliant with what he comes up with. He's an absolute pleasure to work with, hilarious, and is just simply wonderful. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> All righty. So let's bring him up. So without further ado, please welcome to the stage your moderators, makeup and hairstyling branch chair Bill Corso, vice chair Howard Berger, and governor Linda Flowers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. How awesome was that? Um, hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, we're so excited. Um, I'm Bill Corso, as he said, uh, chair this year of the Makeup and Hairstylist Branch Executive Committee, uh, governor, and along with my fellow governors, the great Howard Berger and the great uh, Linda Flowers, we invite, we, we welcome you to the 22nd Makeup and Hairstylist Oscar Symposium. Yeah. All thanks to Leonard Engelman for starting this in the first place. Thank you, Leonard. Kickstarted quite the, uh, quite the thing here at the museum. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, the Academy President, Janet Yang, our Academy CEO, Bill Kramer, both amazing, our Museum Director and President, Jacqueline Stewart, um, for helping orchestrate every, all the events here this week. I hope you've had a chance to see some of them, uh, and I, each year we're just gonna try to make this bigger and better. Um, we also wanna acknowledge and thank some of our amazing academy and museum staffs, 
you don't believe what they're doing around this time of the year, you got, your heads would spin. Um, Amy Homa, Christine Yabara, Silver Feldman, uh, Eduardo Sanchez, and the lovely Michael Benedict, and so many more. They do an amazing job. Um, all right, let me give you a quick rundown uh, for those of you who don't know how we got to this point. Um, the makeup and hairstyling branch meets throughout the year. Um, we love what we do, and we're very committed to finding the very best of the films and the makeup and hairstyling of films released in, for the, around the entire world. Um, uh, in December, we hold a meeting um, where we take all the films that we've discussed up to that point, uh, of which there are many, <laughs> um, and discussed in, in incredibly great detail, and we narrow that down and vote to determine the 10 movies that will proceed to the makeup and hairstyling bake-off, right? Um, uh, the, the, our short list, right? Um, following uh, that meeting of the 10 movies, the executive committee gets together and we have to decide and determine which artists will be on each ticket for those prospective films. I call it the Sophie's Choice meeting. Uh, and that is a really hard, you know, can you imagine picking, you know, of, of the incredible teams of people that we work with, because we represent some of the best artists in the business, and having to select one, two, maybe three, to represent all those amazing artists. It's an impossible task. Um, we spend incredible uh, uh, time to make that final decision. It is not taken lightly. Uh, the committee discusses until we feel we have the very best decision for each movie. They're all incredibly different. The criteria is, as always, who was the most responsible for the work that rose to the outstanding achievement? Um, doing a good job on a film, uh, as we often tell ourselves, is not necessarily uh, worth an Oscar. We want a, an outstanding level of achievement. Um, in January, we hold the Makeup and Hair Selling Bake Off, where the artists from the 10 shortlisted films and the governors engage in a conversation about their work. Um, accompanied by a seven-minute reel from each film. At that time, the Makeup Artists and Hairstyles branch vote to determine the five nominees. Um, today, you will have the pleasure of meeting them, hearing about the work that they did, and if we're lucky, maybe we'll even have a surprise or two. Um, this year, we are celebrating the work of Golda, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Society of the Snow. So, let's get started. Our first clip will be from Golda. This country is traumatized. My generals are begging me to occupy Cairo. Sharon is, a, is like a dog on the leash. If you do that, you'll be on your own. Israel's long-term interest will not be served by a fracturing of our relationship, Golda. Sadat has already agreed to the terms of the ceasefire. Oh, of course he has. He's on the brink of defeat. It will give him a chance to regroup. You are the only person in the world who could possibly understand what I'm going through. Yes, I know how you feel, but we need a ceasefire. I thought we were friends, Henry. We will always protect Israel. Like you did in 48? We had to get our weapons from Stalin. Stalin! Our survival is not in your gift. If we have to, we will fight alone. That was, uh, that's pretty amazing. Great clip. Hope you guys enjoyed it. First clip. So uh, what we'd like to do is interview, or I'm sorry, invite our nominees from Golda. 
please come on out. Come meet your audience. You want to clap with the microphone, but it's hard. I know, yeah, you're trying to clap. Great. Thank you guys for joining us today. So, hey, I heard that you guys brought a special guest today, right, Karen? Yes. Do you know, do you know who you brought? Well, hang on. Uh, yes, it's our esteemed director, Guy Nativ. Wonderful. Can you stand up? Thank you, Guy. Thank you. Why, this is great, having the director here for this movie. That's fantastic. Hi, everyone. Huh? Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Good, Not good, so good. Bad. Well, let's just jump into it, shall we? So, Guy, I had a question for you. So, regarding the, the makeup, how, um, what was most important for you to, to get for, for our team here to uh, uh, achieve a likeness or um, uh, for Dame Helen to be able to act and perform or all of the above, of course, I'm sure? What was, what was that process? Well, because Golda is a very, you know, known character in Israel and all over the world, we wanted to have um, the right, the right Golda, the authentic Golda, um, and it's not easy to get there uh, without losing your actress. You know what I mean? So I think that it was the perfect balance that we tried to achieve with Helen, of course. Did who you always have Helen? Well, it's actually um, <laughs> Gideon uh, Meir, the grandson of, of Golda, who thought about Helen for the first time before I even joined the, the, the project. And he said, I see my grandmother. Uh, there's some kind of vibe with Helen that I, I really see there. And he told us there that, and obviously Helen was the perfect choice. Oh, that's great. I that's agree. Amazing. She's yeah. wonderful in that film. Karen, I'm going to start with you. My darling Karen, we had a lot of fun at the nominee dinner. <laughs> we got in our we're cups. We're best friends now. So I feel like you know, <laughs> we're good friends. So Karen, how did the project first come to you? And what were your initial thoughts of how to achieve the look for Golda, especially having worked with Helen before? Yes, obviously, having worked with Helen, it was a sort of a shortcut. I know her face. I know everything about her. I had a meeting with Guy that I had to sort of fit in over half an hour. I don't think I gave him any option because when you read a script like that, well, work doesn't come along like that very often. So I begged and pleaded for Guy and he very kindly gave me the job. And we didn't have very much time, Linda. That was the thing. We had about six weeks from start to finish. So Helen and I were sort of trying to steer away maybe from too much on the prosthetic line, a wig. So we went to Guy and Guy said, no, come on, we're doing it. So he, we pushed everything. <laughs> yes. He I didn't give that. me any options on it. And we thought, let's do everything. Let's get the wig, the eyebrows, contacts. There's a lot goes into it. Don't forget the legs, the ankles. Yes, <laughs> and the ankles. They always get a big mention. That's Sinead Kidal, our co wonderful costume designer. So then I sort of phoned up Susie and I think gave her a heart attack when I told her we've got about five weeks to do it. We got the life scan done here. And I think really we just threw everything into it and thought, let's see. We knew that Helen lent herself very, very well to it, that we could do sort of maybe a minimum of prosthetics and Helen would shine through. It's two very iconic women that you're trying to, you know, make one into the other. We didn't want to just transpose the face of gold onto Helen. We wanted Helen to be able to be comfortable. And she wasn't very keen, to put it mildly, in the beginning. But on the day that everything came together, she was just over the moon. And we had to go with it then. We were really happy. That's, uh, it, that's what amazes me, is that, you know, who, for those of us who do this, and we, we ask for so much time and so many weeks to test, and as we were discussing, you know, and retest and retest, and you guys basically were like, you're shot out of a cannon. So Susie, <laughs> you know, with such a short prep, five weeks, you know, to, to design this um, amazing, you know, uh, visage, and, and all the and how far to go and, and you know it's like your first shot out of it to get everything ready in time because you know then they're working every day you know so and, and you've uh, and like looking at your credits like you you this is not like in your resume like these doing these big movies and everything like this you know not this is a big huge movie but this type of makeup is so incredibly specific and and you know but having done that were you better prepared 
maybe with TV, like, like I can do this and I can do this fast and this is our chance now. Yeah, that's a good point, Bill, actually, because a lot of the projects we had worked on previously, actually, yeah, there was a lot of TV, a little bit of film, but yeah, where the turnaround is so fast, it's very unforgiving. Um, so yeah, you're right, I wouldn't have chosen to have <laughs> got it all together in, in, I think, the three and a half weeks we had from when we actually received the print, which is kind of mad. But, um, but it literally worked perfectly because yeah. of that. Yeah, it was it was just about having to make decisions really quickly. You know, I've said before that Karen and I were very much on the same page with how far we wanted to go with it and the approach to make sure we didn't overwhelm Helen, which kind of worked to our advantage anyway, kind of a less is more approach anyway. But it had to just be like, okay, that's what my gut is saying. We just have to go for it. And like you said, and basically not put a, a foot wrong in any of those days. I mean, it was literally working every seven days a week, just nonstop, all day, all day, <laughs> until that first camera test and then continuing to make a few changes. Because I know, you know, from watching other prosthetic designers, many of whom are nominated this year alongside us, I know from looking at their work, how their processes are for something of this caliber. Um, and I know that, well, I've got to allow myself space for us to test and re-sculpt just in case. So the time just had to be, you know, it just had to kind of fit in with all of that, to be honest, and hit the ground running, basically. Like you say, shot out of a cannon is a good, <laughs> good yeah. description. No, I mean, also, uh, we had the test a week before shooting, didn't we? Yeah. Helen got off the plane, we did the test, and a week to make any changes. That's no time to make changes at all. So it was just unbelievable from start to finish. I, I got to just say something here. Um, they did a, 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 an amazing work in no time and no budget. Okay, it was like a shoestring budget, and you nailed it, and you did such an amazing job. And they I, did. yeah, they did. And <laughs> kudos to you. But I hope everybody's seen this movie, by the way. It's but phenomenal. What they didn't know is that I'm gonna go extreme close-ups <laughs> on <laughs> their work, to put it mildly, which <laughs> they found mildly. out during the shoot. So, but you handled it quite well. Well, we did scream at you, guy, no, don't do that. But then, of course, when we see it, and it looks amazing on the close-up, we're very happy. But, yes, there were a few expletives going around when we saw the size of the Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, you're saying that that, you know, I mean, there's always close-ups and so forth, but was there, you know, Asha uh, and Susie and Karen, and uh, were there any, like, happy surprises as you were putting this together and you're like, hey, yeah. that really worked? Great, or you know, I think so. I think when it came to um, painting the pieces beforehand, um, so I was painting them along with Nikki and Raj, who worked at um, Red Girl at the time, and uh, just getting that skin tone and the skin texture and everything perfect for application because we only had two hours to apply the whole makeup. Um, it was a neck, two cheeks, a nose, and eye bags, so it wasn't a small job, and especially with the pieces being as soft as they were and Helen's skin as well being, you know, uh, softer because of her age. Um, it made the whole application really, really tricky, but we had to nail it every single time. And I think that was something that was really lovely is getting that pre-paint saved us so much time when it came to actually applying the, the pieces because then we didn't have to do as much touch up and, uh, and changes. And I think also another accomplishment that we had was that our pieces, um, all of the edges were on show. So when you see the movie, the cheeks finish in the middle of her face, um, and we had to make sure that with these big close-ups <laughs> that um, we had it just basically uh, perfect and, yeah, indistinguishable from her actual skin. Um, and that was, that was definitely great. And just to add to that, oh, clap, yes, clap, clap. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Howard, like a pleasant surprise was definitely the softness, yeah. right? Because I don't know if any of you know, I've mentioned it before, but the, uh, I'd been waiting for an opportunity to run these incredibly soft silicones, which is really like unusual. Um, it happened through an accidental uh, thing that I did when I was working for somebody else. Uh, a happy accident of putting in too much deadener by, by mistake. And it came out, you know, reverse engineering it going, God, how is it so soft? We figured out it was about 350%, but it had cured and that was really surprising and confusing. And we all thought, God, you know what, for, for a sort of old age kind of makeup, this will be the most perfect thing. So I had that in my mind with these quick decisions of like, we've got to try it, we have to try it. But I didn't know if it was going to work or not. Mm -hmm. You know, it was flying by the seat of our pants, to be honest. So when we did our first runs in time for the makeup test, 
it was just such a such a delight that I was like, God, it was worth doing. I was right, you know, it was so great. So that was. Really I will cool. say that once we got it, once we knew this is our Golda, we had such a relief, and I yeah. could, you know, shoot and and you know, also shout out to Helen who came every. 4 a.m. to for two and a half hours just to put on and then at the end of the shoot another hour and a half to take it off and with no you know just made it happen so uh, she was amazing and also in I think every day I couldn't think of a day she had off almost every scene she was no really complaints uh, no complaints not ever any complaints yeah well, your very, very commitment lucky. from all of you and Helen it really shows on it the does screen, it's so. great we want to thank you guys so much for coming here. Congratulations. We're excited about tomorrow. Thank you. Very much. Guy, thank you very much for coming and, and thank joining you so us. Much for having saying us. such thank lovely you. things about a makeup and hair team. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the clip for our next movie, which is Maestro. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the team from Maestro. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, you guys, and congratulations. What an accomplishment. Such a great great show of artistry it's um it was a, a really a pleasure to to watch that movie um so laurie since i'm here and you're here i'm going to start with you sounds um, good so laurie L lenny had very distinctive hair how many wigs did you utilize for all his stages and were there certain scenes such as his conducting the mailer piece that provided extra challenging with matching his looks because he was quite active in that there was a lot of action in that look for sure um, I had uh, four wigs total. Um, I used the earliest stage. I used the same wig for two things. I just added some gray into that. So there's five stages, but four wigs. Um, for that, the, the mailer scene with his hair soaking wet, his skin soaking wet, and he tested hair out completely on that and a wig on how it moves wet as well as makeup, if you recall him 
with his head slamming up and down, and, and you see the water coming out because uh, apparently if anyone had the opportunity to see Leonard Bernstein and himself conduct, he was quite exuberant and very and animated and very yes. active, and, and he did sweat quite a bit. So he, uh, Bradley wanted to convey that in that beautiful scene. So um, it, it was a little bit more challenging, but it worked. The hair moved yeah. and, you know, it was sopping wet, sopping yeah. wet. <laughs> Which is not uh, makeup or prosthetics and hair's favorite when you have to deal with water. But It was so over overwhelming, that scene, when it started. Um, I didn't realize, and I don't think Kazu realized either, how wild he was going to take it and how big it was going to be because it during rehearsal you didn't see that when you're rolling in the 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 amount of the music was so it just really touched you and then you see this man Bradley Cooper who I've worked with for so many years and I look at him like Leonard Bernstein at this point and you see him actually I felt like I was seeing Leonard Bernstein conduct and then test us to the limit <laughs> You know, at first I worried, okay, wait, Kazoo, he's opening his mouth so big. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh my God, he's doing this to his head. <laughs> Gonna fly off. <laughs> um, it, was, it was just an experience. And I enjoyed every minute. Yes, of and it. for the audience, if you get a chance, remember to go downstairs and look at the displays. You'll see all the wigs and the prosthetics that they used. And and Kay Giorgio is not here. She's also uh, part of the hair team, and for she did the rest of the cast and over oversee the background and the the hair in the whole movie. Outstanding, you know. Bradley's look is outstanding, but the whole movie was outstanding. So good job. Thanks. Okay, Kazu. Yes. Um, now I know uh, you're you're selective about the work you take on, mm -hmm. but this particular project, Lenny, and and your relationship with how you came upon Bradley and the project is really fascinating and unique, and and it goes back to your childhood. So I. I I, th I think it, that would be a wonderful thing to oh, explain. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, so it was about the time, well, when I started the, the special effects makeup, you know, at that time there's no internet. So every time I look for a reference, like an old people's face and, the cat, you know, like a famous people's face, it's always have to go to the bookstore and pick the portrait book. You know, it's, it's expensive because it got almost like $100 each books, you know, and a special import book. And so I saw every portrait, like a big portrait book, uh, it, it's Leonard Bernstein, Bernstein was in it. And so I was wondering, who is this guy? You know, like a, it's such an iconic look and it was greatly dressed and he knew how to pose in a picture. And so I was wondering, who is this? And so one, t one day, I think it's just, just a, a year after I started uh, makeup as a hobby, like when I was 17, and I, f I watched the documentary about the Leonard Bernstein, and he was in Japan and teaching a student how to conduct and everything, and doing a rehearsal. And he was, you know, I really felt that his commitment and the passion and dedication to the music, and that's he was teaching to the students. And uh, there's a really, uh, I remember, like, uh, you know, I can't remember word by word, but uh, what he was saying is, the, the difference between like a mediocre musician and the best musician is like a night, night and day. It takes a whole commitment and dedication of your life. And so I watched that and I learned a lot because it's a, it's a, it applied to the makeup artists too. You know, you really have to spend your time and doing your best effort to be an excellent makeup artist. And so I was thinking uh, someday I want to work on a film about Leonard Bernstein. And that was uh, like 36 years ago, you know? And I was Incredible. thinking, and then uh, I read an article about uh, Bradley is making a film about Leonard Bernstein. And so I tried to reach out to him, you know, like I sent a letter to the production, the studio, and nothing, you know, nothing happened. And a month later, he just texted me, are you interested to work on this project? And of course, I, you know, and. Uh, and then after you, you probably wept or screamed into the corner. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I was at the same time nervous because it's such a big responsibility. You know, it's about uh, uh, going through his whole life, you know, like from 25 and 71 years old. 
And so I was very excited, but I was very scared about it too. And so, and uh, I found out later, and uh, I asked Bradley, how did you ha find out about me? And uh, so he was working with uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro on the Nightmare Alley. And so they were figuring out who who would be the best makeup artist. And so uh, Bradley asked Guillermo uh, who would be the best one, you know, for this show. And so Guillermo said to Bradley, "Cause uh, is the only one who can do this." And so that's why I got the job. <laughs> yeah, Isn't that great. <laughs> it it pays to become the best at what you do, and it pays to make friends, and it and it pays to put something out into the universe because you know what? It comes back to you. And how lucky was Bradley to get that info about you? I, I'm the lucky one. <laughs> the job. And, and Laura, you've been with Bradley a long time. Was this one of the most challenging jobs that you've had with him? I think it was the most busiest job. I mean, you know, working with more than 20 films with him, we have characters in each one and he's worn wigs and buzzed wigs when he didn't I love that her. about him. He always likes to do something with his hair, and I really love that. <laughs> Thanks. We always try to do something so we don't see Bradley Cooper. We see the character. Um, I think I think hev heavily it was more makeup that was mm -hmm. taking so, you know, taking all that time. I put on a wig, and I put it on great, apparently, <laughs> and, you know, it's just more than I kind of feel like, <laughs> you know, it's what we do. And, just and a wig. It's just a wig. It's just, it's it's just a wig. Right? It's all, or they'll go, it's just a nose. And you're like, you mean the thing right here in the middle of your face? <laughs> so I, I have a question. So um, Linda had mentioned that Kay Giorgio is not able to be with us today. Um, uh, uh, you know, she was so in, involved with the film. Same with Sean. Sean Griggs, who yeah. uh, was the makeup department head on the show. You want to talk a little bit about working with them and their involvement yeah. on the show? Yeah, you know, Sean, Sean was an amazing makeup artist. It's like, uh, you know, she's great, but... The first time I saw Kay's job on the Carrie Milligan, and I was thinking, "Oh God, is the, this is the first time I saw like a lady like a he he she lady keep me in on the tall." It is it's like a, such an amazing. It's like a so natural, and they're almost like a, you know like a wig. Sometimes look like a wig, but the, what she does is she, it looks like a, it's growing out from their own head. You know, such so delicate and natural, and that was uh, really like uh, I really glad I worked with Kay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, she's great. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I know that Kay had with Carrie several different looks that she had to go through. You know, she had the youngest stage, and then she used Carrie's no regular hair. She cut it and she colored it, and then on the oldest stages she had was another wig. And I guess uh, Felicia had gone through so many different colors. In her in her lifetime, uh, in different different styles, and she kind of kept that tone down. What I found interesting, uh, and it's on display, is that there's a silk lining, and I, I haven't used the silk lining inside the wig, uh, on the girls' wigs that make it look like the scalps. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, I know we used to do that, and we've done that for years. And I just haven't seen it lately, so. Because she couldn't make it, and she's doing fittings in New York, I, you know, I, I put them on the block for that. So I, I was surprised to see that, and I, I was like, oh, that, that's still used, and I think that worked very really well. It, it works great, great. And, it's, and it's cool. Even though we're, you know, here you are, we're not. You guys are nominated, and just, we're still learning. We still There's look at, you know, learn trick. from everybody we we know, and and it's I really love great. that. I'm keep learning, you know, like again, looking at all the displays, which everybody should go down and look at. I'm like, oh, that's how Kazu did it, or that's how you know th th these guys did it, or this guy. It's always something amazing to learn. So, yeah, well, I just I, I have to throw one thing in uh, about this particular film, and that when I, you know when I've talked to people about it and everything, and I said the one thing that popped into my head, and I don't know if anybody else felt this, but when the movie ended and they cut to Leonard Bernstein, the real Leonard Bernstein conducting, I said, who's that guy? <laughs> exactly. Because I was so convinced that Bradley Cooper was Leonard. <laughs> Me <Bernstein>. too. <laughs> and it's just to the what the work that they did, it was phenomenal. So congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. Please give a nice hand to the team of, of Maestro. Thanks, Pazu. So now let's take a look at our next clip from the film Oppenheimer. Dr. Oppenheimer. 
Can you explain quantum mechanics to me? We go on the night of the 15th. It's a hard deadline. We will look back on your work here with pride. You have my words. If you say they're from a transcript, then I'll accept it. Why lie? Those are truly vindictive, patient saints. You sit there, day after day. Dr. Oppenheimer. It's not fascism, but communism that now threatens our survival. Why would they have started a file on Dr. Oppenheimer? This is just how the game is played. They made me take over the Manhattan Engineer District. Wasn't confused before, but I'm certainly getting there now. I'm Robbie. Oppenheimer. A fusion program would come at the expense of our awfully good fission program. You must be Oppenheimer. Yes. I hear you want to start a school of quantum theory. Lost in your quantum world. It's not about the book. It's about the ideas. I'm not the judge of who should or should not have information. Do you expend resources trying to find the name of the intermediary? Dr. Oppenheimer. It's an honor. Who's the president? So let's welcome to the stage the lovely Louisa Abel representing Oppenheimer. so hard to clap with this. Oh, there's an empty chair. Uh, Louisa, did you maybe bring somebody with you today? I did. <laughs> I've got the amazing David Cromholtz who played Ravi on Oppenheimer. All right, what a phenomenal movie. Don't, nobody saw this, right? Nobody saw this movie? When does it, does it come, it's already come yeah. out, right? It's already, All I right. think it's out. Uh, you should see it if you haven't seen it. Uh, it, it could actually win uh, an award. Um, okay. <laughs> um, uh, Louisa, okay. Um, you, you've worked with Chris Nolan uh, on, on, a, on a bunch of films and, and you guys have, a, an, I'm sure you have a, a process and a collaboration that you do. You know, when he comes to you with, a project like Oppenheimer, what, how do you start your conversation with them? Well, with this one, I didn't actually know it was Oppenheimer when I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chris told me what it was, and we had a meeting, and I spoke about it, and I realized how ginormous it was. You know, it's IMAX, 70 mil, no CGI, Chris Nolan. Yeah, it was a huge undertaking. Um, but he, you know, he's amazing leader, so it's like he has a real vision, so that, that makes it very easy. And such a trust in you and your team and you know what you bring to the table on all, his, on all those movies. I mean, yeah. such a phenomenal trust in you. Yeah, um, and all the crew, most of the crew keep working with him over and over. In fact, I think I have some of the team in the audience today, so I don't know where well, you I all are. I certainly hope so. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> yeah. The team that she's representing is massive. Uh, yeah. Massive. Yeah, amazing artist. So, David, I always like to talk about the collaboration of the actor with the makeup artist and, and, the, and the team. Will you talk a little bit about your transformation, like you, how, how you found the character uh, and, and how Louisa was able to, to provide those tools for you to help create the character? Yeah, <clears throat> well, I, I, uh, I've ha I have a lot of experience with prosthetics, um, which is, uh, you know, any actor that gets to sort of disguise himself in any way, especially a character actor, um, uh, it, it's it's um, it's it's invaluable. Uh, w you know, it, when you can transform and disappear, uh, it it sort of deepens the the immersion that the actor finds himself uh, going through um, when when he can look in the mirror and not see himself anymore. And that's not necessarily the case on this. I think what uh, Louisa did, which was so brilliant. <clears throat> Was she applied, a, 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 you know, a, a real nuance to the um, prosthetics? You know, they were designed and they were and they were applied so delicately um, because uh, there was there was one big obstacle here, um, one higher degree, uh, which is that 
This was filmed with IMAX cameras, the clearest cameras you can use. And, and we all knew that this would play on giant screens all over the country. So the degree of difficulty in making the makeup look uh, invisible as if it wasn't there. Um, all the characters aged throughout the film over the course of 30, 40 years. And uh, that's no easy task. And Louisa took that incredibly seriously and applied all her filmic sense, all her cinematic sense, and, and Chris's guidance and Chris's standard um, to create something amazing. She also owns a pair of very special glasses. <laughs> Um, and and uh, she can talk more about this, but uh, from what I gather, they were glasses that sort of gave, were incredibly clear and sort of gave her a microscopic, if you will, or a telescopic uh, view of what would end up on screen so that there were no wrinkles in the makeup or anything that would sort of take the audience out of the movie going experience. You know, you, you don't want to be sitting in the theater and going, oh, I can see that the makeup's a little different than the last scene. Or, or you know, it, it, it's fluid throughout, and that's, that's a, a, cr a credit to her and her team. Yeah, it's, it is incredible. Yeah, so Louisa, let's talk about your team a little bit, because we all know it takes a village to do this. Yeah. So who are some of your key players your PR artist that helped you. Yeah, so um, Jason Hamer, of course, at Hamer Effects, who made all the prosthetics, which you can see. Um, it was incredible. And Hiro Yada is there with him all the time. I don't know if Hiro's here, but yeah. And then um, Jamie Kelman, Jamie Hess, you know, Karen Jackson, uh, so many people. I mean, amazing makeup artists. And we had huge team when it was the big prosthetic days. But yeah. It, we, I was very lucky, really lucky. Yeah, you had an amazing team, and I don't know. I know there's a lot of uh, people that don't work in the film business here with us today, but yeah, it truly takes a village. Yeah, and of course, um, Jamie Lee McIntosh, who was the hairdresser that I worked with, absolutely, was yeah, phenomenal as well. And all, all of her team, and we we really had a really good crew, and it was that's what I think why Oppenheimer works really because we had everybody working for this. Common, you know, common. I know as a department head or designers, you're the one that, you know, they come to and, and pat you on the back, but also if there's any problems, you're the one that they come to. So yeah. to oversee a team like that, I know, is a great responsibility. Yeah, it was a great, it was a really enjoyable film to work on. I mean, I think a lot of it is because we all got on so well with each other. And, yeah, you have to work hard. I mean, you know, with prosthetics and what we were doing, it's like you have no sleep. But it was actually really great to work on it. And the actors were amazing i mean so patient so. i mean that's that's part of the success too is you know you you yeah. have you create this process but the actors have to believe in it and go down that road with you you know if you have resistance it becomes an issue for everybody but well <clears throat> it, it, <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> like it wasn't like any of the cast didn't feel extremely fortunate to right. be making that film so you you leave the complaining to another project, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> some small it, indie or some random TV show. I think show. it would be hard to uh, go to Chris yeah, you, Nolan. You don't set. complain on the Oppenheimer no, set. No, not no. at all. Um, <laughs> but there was nothing to complain about. It, you know, uh, look, I'm a film nerd. I can only speak for myself, but I'm a nerd. And the whole thing is fascinating to me and always has been makeup effects and uh, especially uh, absolutely fascinating so it's all you know for me pinch me moments i'm just grateful sitting in that chair and and uh, and they were so again so gentle and so specific with what they wanted and and you know uh, it just the whole experience was a privilege but uh, the the makeup um you know their your, her team was so kind and lovely uh and and patient and um, you know, uh, it just it just it bl blew my mind. And then I think a lot of the fun was also, you know, in the for instance, in that uh, sort of scene toward the end of the film where Oppenheimer receives a medal from uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, and we all showed up in our oldest age makeup, and it was funny to see ourselves, you know, like oh look at you, ah you look, <laughs> God, you, you, you aged well, and you maybe not so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we brought everyone back into the trailer once everyone was finished so they could all experience each other before they went to set. It was funny, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very funny. <laughs> I bet that was a really fun There was a receding way. hairline on uh, Dylan Arnold, who plays uh, 
uh, Oppenheimer's brother, Frank, and uh, it was shocking that how hairline. <laughs> I mean, it matched the real thing in real life, but it was like, whoa, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that you know, and, and to that, that the 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 relationship between the actor and and the stuff that we do, and you know that it's people don't realize sometimes how intimate you know the 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 makeup and hair teams are with the actors, and and how that they're the process of helping them become that character, and and one of the things that I loved about the movie is not only is is the the, the last scene and they're o you're older, but so many of the characters you did you you. De-age them. They're younger, you yeah. know, to give them the arc, you know, to go from, you know, and I think some of those, the, those looks in the movie are the are the coolest looks, you know, because it's so subtle and they're 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 so they're, it gives you that beautiful transition. Um, um, you know, how are the actors? You know, how are you guys with? You know, not only again, the older is the easy way to go, but but sometimes you're seeing yourself a little younger, and it's like, oh, I'm I'm this person now younger. I think that's a fascinating. I'm 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 73 years old, and so uh, <laughs> uh, seeing myself as a 20-something year old with you know taking 50 years, I can't thank you enough. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no, uh, um, uh, I'm not 73. I'm 72. No, um, it, it, you know, it, it, it the whole thing uh, was fascinating. You know. Um, you know, they do it with special effects now, right? They do it with, like, you know, on, on, uh, for, for Well, instance. they can do it with yes, they computers can and AI and everything, but computer. there's nothing better. There, there really is nothing better than the, in the actual mirror. thing. And we're not there yet, and <laughs> hopefully we never get yeah. there. Because, frankly, um, the real thing, you know, I think audiences are a lot smarter, and it speaks to some of what's going on now that's been in the news lately is that audiences are a lot smarter than to accept something that they don't feel is human or at the very least uh, a reflection of humanity, even in makeup. And, uh, you know, the hope is that, uh, that, that we keep getting to do our thing, you know. I'm so glad you said that. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that we don't go anywhere. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you guys very much. B brilliant work, an amazing movie. Have a wonderful time tomorrow. Congratulations, thank Oppenheimer. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the clip from our next film, which is Poor Things. I must touch your hair. I also noticed your hair, just like silk on a translucent, glowing egg. That is fancy words that excite me somehow. We are all on a ship and cannot escape, and there is a world to enjoy, traverse, circumnavigate. Or can she not have friends, Mr. Wedderburn? What would she feel on being dragged? from her carefully chosen blank eternity and forced to be put in one of our understaffed, poorly equipped madhouses, reform trees, or jays. Who was I to decide her fate? I seek employment at your musty-smelling establishment of good time fornication. A woman plotting her course to freedom. That'd be not for We're on to uh, poor things. So I'd like to introduce and welcome to the stage our nominees for Makeup and Hair for Poor Things, please. Come on. Great. Thanks for joining us. How Thank exciting. You. Thank How you. exciting. Oh. What a, what a unique movie you guys made. <laughs> so, um, uh, hey, I noticed that. Bill, look, there's a chair next to you. <laughs> That's weird. How did we miscount? Um, Mark, do you have somebody here uh, that you might want to introduce? Yes, we have uh, our Godwin Baxter, the amazing Willem Dafoe. <laughs> Ah, 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Willem, for joining us. It's a, it is a big honor. So. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nadia, I'm going to start with you. Um, so obviously this movie is unique in itself. Never seen anything like this before. And um, I just want to talk about, or you can talk about, I don't want to talk about it, uh, <laughs> just about, you know, how... how how this all came about, like, you know, your, your discussions with the director, uh, the production designer, costume designer, you know, obviously there's a very specific look for all the characters. Yeah, so um, I, got, um, I got the script and then went in to see very early stages of production design and costume design um, and just realized that we were creating something completely unique and in very much Yorgos style, something we hadn't seen before. And so it was just really important to me that we created characters that had something different about them. And, you know, Bella is a character that is a woman starting from scratch that doesn't exist. <laughs> and um, so I needed her to be um, really to stand out in this kind of crazy world that we were creating and uh, with, with all our characters. Um, and then I got the email from... Yorgos shortly afterwards that just said, no wigs, that's all it said. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> which is, you know, petrifying. Um, and then um, just trying to figure out how to create this hair that keeps growing all the way through the movie. And the only wig we were allowed was uh, Hannah on the ship, the lady with the white hair. Um, so, yeah, I just got to give a shout out to my team, actually, that are here. Um, uh, yeah, give a shout out. Claire Campbell, Ellen DeAndre Brown, and Grayson Galway are up there. So, <laughs> great team. So, Willem, I had the pleasure of working with Willem on Spider Man, and he is a very generous, fun, really fun person to be in the trailer with. So, I'm excited you came today. Thank you so much. We all love Willem. <laughs> Thank you. And what a fun character. Oh, my gosh. Would you please tell us about your collaboration with Mark, Josh, and Nadia to find the look of Godwin Baxter? And what was that, what was that like for you? I had very little to do with the design. I mean, uh, Yorgos started showing me examples of what they had, and uh, there was a whole process. The beautiful thing about Yorgos is he really collaborates with all of the departments in a very intimate way. I feel like he doesn't delegate. He doesn't say, okay, I'm not that interested in makeup. This is what I want. You do it. There was a process. And I watched them do that process. I weighed in a couple of times. With, he didn't really take my suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> so I arrive, and then I just become this thing that they uh, start to work on. And as David Krumholtz kind of said before, you sit in the mirror, you see yourself recede, and you see something else emerge. So it's a beautiful invitation to consider another way of being and consider being someone else. And it's not that mysterious. We all look in the mirror. We know what, what cl different clothes can make us feel like. We know what different uh, street makeup can make us feel like. It's just an extension of that. I also had body uh, prosthetics, which cannot, I can't say enough about that because that changes how you move. So when you don't feel like yourself, you don't move like yourself, you don't you start not to think like yourself, and then you apply all of those adjustments to what's going on in the scene and the world, and then uh, it kind of becomes very fluid and very organic, hopefully. It's a real Lon Chaney yeah. performance. So to that, Mark, Josh, um, it, it, it's the rare Frankenstein story where the, uh, the doctor is more monstrous than his creation. <laughs> um, and I love, I love your guy. I resent that. <laughs> uh, He's I, a good guy. He has his problems. He's the, he's the hero. Um, look, and, I, and, and obviously Yorgos' take on, on Goodwin and, and, and um, how he kept pushing you and Josh and, and your team to go farther and farther. Um, and, I, and I love the, the story behind that. Uh, why, don't you, why, don't you, why don't you elaborate? Uh, yeah, I'll start and then hand over to Josh. Um, yeah, it was, it was um, you know, we're working on a Yorgos Lanthimos film. We're trying to create something unique, something that where you're looking at this character and you haven't seen a makeup that looks like that ever before. You know, that's what we're, we're trying to achieve. No small task. No small task. You know, and if you, if you look at the um, uh, photographs that we've got on repeat downstairs, you'll see about 50 different versions of the design. 
um, you know, we've got this fantastic canvas, you know, just starting point, and we don't want to lose Willem's face, you know, you want to be able to perform, you know, it's all about uh, creating prosthetics that enable you to uh, move your face and, and naturally. Um, so that was a, a big concern because Yorgos wanted something really you know, huge. The way he was describing it, it was something really elaborate and, and, and huge, but we're trying to hone it and make it as extreme as possible, but keeping the humanity as well. And that was the other thing, you know, Baxter's a, you know, you need to feel empathy for Baxter. He's a, he, you know, he, he, he needs to become just a normal character after you, the, the initial shock of seeing him, you know. And that's down to Willem's performance as well, you know. So, I mean, Josh sculpted, I don't know, how many? Uh, I versions? think I sculpted about 15 different versions. And first of all, as it, a kind of a, a miniature, because we, um, we couldn't get the live cast done initially because of COVID restrictions. So I sculpted a small portrait, and we went from there just trying different looks, different scarring. Um, Yorgos definitely wanted the scars to be straight and purposeful, but there was not much, not much other than that. There was no other... Yeah, I mean, we were trying to think of uh, logical things. What would Which was what would his surgeon thing. father have, have have done to him? Would he have you know experimented on his eye? Would he have taken his brain out? But you know all the things that you talk logically, and then Yorgos was like, "No, forget all that. I don't want logic. I want <laughs> I want it to look weird, you know." And yeah, our version of weird and Yorgos's version of weird is, is his will always be more extreme. You know, he wanted the ear to sit out an inch from the head, you know, and we were like, oh, that's going to look really... <laughs> oh, my. So how do, we, how do we wrestle this and how do we control this? How would Picasso do this? How do, yeah, how do, we, how do we make it extreme? Oh, Francis Bacon. The Francis Bacon was... was, 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 was he wanted a walking, talking Francis Bacon painting. And so that was always our underpinning all our designs and er everything that we did. Yeah, no, it was... It was trying just to outweird him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah trying to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Was there a point where you took it to a point where he was like, "No, that's too far." You never get no. to. Yeah. No, I wouldn't think so. No. Yeah. I but if you look downstairs, it. it's just a lot of <laughs> no reaction from your goss. You know, so you do this sculpture and send it to him, and it's like, nah. <laughs> do another one. Nah. <laughs> there was never a. Oh, I like this bit. Could you change that bit to this? And there's not. It's not that. He just wants to see the finished thing done. He's so just we trying to create a patination of scarring that worked and sat on the face well. Uh, and trying not to, as Mark said, not to cover Willem too much. We didn't have anything on the neck, Willem. just so we could keep the Cut movement, it. really. <laughs> um, so although the pieces look big when you look at them downstairs, and quite a large chin, which actually had two plumpers underneath it to try and push it out even more. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, it looks big, but the pieces are very fine, quite intricate to apply. Um, but Willem was fantastic, he would just sit there in the chair and let myself and Robin Pritchard, who applied it with me, um, just get on and do the job, um, which was great. Uh, getting up in the morning that early wasn't great, but. <laughs> 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 and well, just a big shout out to our, our, our crew as well. Yeah. You know, we had we had 20 odd yeah. people working with us um, and <laughs> designers. Take the village. And Maddie's team. Yeah, yeah, well, the amazing Hungarian team as well. And Carolyn Cousins, my supervisor, was, yeah, we just couldn't have done it without you all. Excellent. Well, do you do you remember how many times you had to go through that makeup? Please. You tell me. You yeah, we did it in the clock, not me. We did. <laughs> <laughs> we, we applied. It was twenty-one shooting days, but then we had a anyway. few tests in between. We got about that twenty-four times. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, that was okay. Did you ha did, Were you able to test him prior? Like, did you do it a couple times? No, we did. Well, we did two tests. Two? Well, we did one with Robin because he was coming in ah, to help yeah. work with me. So. Yeah, two tests, but just just that one makeup. We didn't test any other looks. Um, oh, that's amazing. You'll see downstairs the all the multiple variations, each one as cool as the next, and you're like, oh my god, these are all amazing. So that you it, to understand the process, you know, of what got to that point and that performance is is phenomenal, and it just goes to the work that they all did, you know, probably on every character and coming up with whatever the looks were. So it's it's just amazing to be and to be commended and and to be in such a great movie. I mean, a wacky, <laughs> crazy movie. It's awesome. It is awesome. It's really great when makeup gets to be part of the narrative. Like you're, I always say it's the it's the actor's job to tell the writer's story, but it's our job to tell the, the character story. 
So it's a it's 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 always an interesting collaboration. Yeah, it's absolutely a combination of everything. Yeah. Well, we, we thank you guys very much for coming. Congratulations. Thank you. Willem, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, thank Congrats. you. Congrats. Yes, that way. So uh, we're on to our, our, last, our last bit here at the symposium. We're going to be looking at a clip from Society of the Snow. La Sociedad de la Nieve es una película que habla sobre la vida en un lugar donde no hay espacio para la vida. Esto fue una tragedia tan triste. Solamente pensá que perdés a tu madre o a tu hermana el mismo día, vivís 72 días en el peor lugar que puede vivir el ser humano. La película es como vuelta a la vida por un ratito de los que ya no están. Yo vi a mi hermano en una pantalla gigante. Todo lo que yo tenía guardado durante 50 años es bordón. Él hizo todo lo posible. A mí no me extraña lo que vi de Marcelo en la película, porque yo sabía cómo era él. Van a venir. La película me llevó a una realidad impresionante de lo que nosotros vivimos. De una historia muy dura, pero una historia brutal de amistad y de solidaridad y de unión. Yo era conmigo, dale. Sultano. Está bárbaro. La película está... Impresionante. Fueron los primeros que se acordaron que no eran 16 y que eran 29 más. Los sobrevivientes, ellos volvieron gracias a los que no volvieron. Yo como, siento que, 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 que se abrió un camino y el cambio interior mío fue muy grande. Gracias a la película. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the team from Society of the Snow. <laughs> welcome and congratulations. I know you came a long way for this. And again, I think we have an empty chair. <laughs> Another ch empty chair. <laughs> Would you like to tell us? Uh, uh, of your surprise guest you brought today? Well, uh, I first will say, <clears throat> you know, looking at all our friends and colleagues speaking that perfect English, you will have to forgive us or, well, rusty mm, English. So, yeah, thank you very much for that. <laughs> and I think the, the yeah, we have a, a very special guest is uh, Simon Hempe. Simon, hello, hello. He's playing Coche. Oh my God, you look much better than in the movie. So different in the movie. Thank you so you much. You certainly look better fed. Yes. <laughs> oh, I feel so lucky being here. Yes. Thank you for coming and joining. Thank you. So, Anna, Anna, I'm going to start with you. One of the reasons the transition of the cast and the survivors is so successful is how well you established them in the beginning, all healthy and fresh, before the event of the film takes hold. How closely did you stick to the actual players' look, looks and discuss how you, David, Montz, and your team collaborated to achieve each of these characters' specific breakdown? Because they go through a lot of stages. Um, and we also understand sorry, that director. I speak Spanish, oh. and he yeah. translates oh. for me because I'm sorry. I will yeah, do my best. It's awful. Pues en, es una cosa muy bonita en la película porque la pregunta quiere decir que realmente no se tiene que notar cuando empieza uno y termina otro. Es un trabajo conjunto y, y es una buena señal y un halago <laughs> el que nadie sepa qué hace cada uno. <laughs> so it's a, it's a very uh, good sign and a, and, a, and a pleasure to know that uh, the question that you made is who is doing what in, in the in the process of the of the makeup on the actors, uh, that means that you cannot see the difference or steps that doesn't work. No, no, está bien, así, sí. And so we also understand that director J. A. 
Bayona wanted conditions to be as close to the real thing as possible. Was this a help or a hindrance? Because it's... Por supuesto, claro, es, sí, por supuesto ayuda. <risa> sí, sí, creo que eso era lo que él quería y lo que queríamos nosotros también. O sea, siempre coincidíamos cuando algo era... No sé si esto siempre era, era, era auténtico. Y desde luego en esta película ya es, es, es que él lo quiere y es que es una necesidad. O sea, lo que estás contando en esta historia es absolutamente real todo. Y entonces no te puedes permitir que algo no lo parezca. Entonces todo lo que nos podíamos acercar en, en, en peluquería, que es donde empezamos, está... My, my brain doesn't give that much. So, <laughs> sorry, my memory. Uh, so um, the, the, the thing is that J.A. wanted to, you know, to be super close to the reality with all the characters. And this, what Hannah is saying, is that this was a really great help. You know, it's like it was something that it, it's not that something that you want to do. It's something that you need to do. It's something that you need to do for respect to the survivors that uh, they are still alive nowadays and uh, something that the team wanted to do. Que teníamos que acercar desde el principio de, de la película, teníamos que acercar a todos los personajes. Empezamos en, mucho en peluquería, que está Belén, está makeup, <laughs> hair styling de la película, está por allí. <laughs> yeah, we, we start with sí. the hair. I mean, y uh, parte de nuestro equipo. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, here uh, I think there's a lot of society of there's no gang, so I, I guess it's like it's makeup, it's hair, it's actors. Un gran equipo que está Everybody. aquí apoyándonos. Y bueno, este es el primer acercamiento que hacemos eh, para acercarles a los personajes reales. Después hacemos un desarrollo de personaje, pero esta primera parte es fundamental para enseñarles a ellos. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, this. Oh, sorry, I got, I got lost completely. <laughs> no, que esta, que esta primera parte de acercamiento al ya el personaje real. Después yeah. hay un proceso, pero esta primera parte de para para enseñarles a los personajes reales es fundamental. Yeah, uh, that this like a first part of the process uh, that it's like it's like testing and testing and testing, and then you get to the to the real thing at the end. So, more or less, I think. I th <laughs> more. <laughs> We're really you know, throwing kind David, of difficult. <laughs> David to the wolves Thanks, here, David. doing two jobs. Um, okay, Simo. Um, you know, you amazing makeup artist and, and hair, you know, that you had. Um, could you talk a little bit about the scene um, where you're being examined and you have your prosthetic legs, legs and how that worked and how, and how you, you know, dealt with that and working with the team here? We've got to go an extra day to exercise, to rehearse that. But uh, the first, the most important thing for me to say first is that uh, uh, we were so many actors and uh, we were living such a huge and emotional experience. And they were the first faces we see every morning. And we sit there for about two or three hours maybe without complaining. We leave it for another project as well. <laughs> But um, they were so so kind and so lovely to us that we became a family. So first, thank you for that. Thank Every you. Our Society of the Snow Thanks family. You. Yeah. And that was crazy. I never worked with uh, prosthetic things. And uh, we, I, I got the, my legs under the, 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 the fake legs. And it was crazy how, the, how it works, like when, when you see that in the movie. I feel like, and then I said, that's not my legs. <laughs> but it was crazy. It was a good experience. It is amazing. When, whenever the actors, it's so much fun to watch the actors experience something and see something, you know, or see their face, or, you know, it's, it's such a pleasure to watch what you guys, the reactions you guys have sometimes. Um, so, okay, Muncie, you're going to have to talk, I'm sorry. Uh, so, Muncie and David, let's talk a little bit about, like, all the different stages of, of prosthetic makeups you did, because obviously, you know, Anna starts everybody, uh, you know, looking good and healthy and, fr and, and, and youthful. And you shot, and also, did you, I can't recall, did you shoot this in continuity? You did, so that made it a little bit easier, right? Uh, but will you talk about the, the work that you guys did? Yeah, um, well, we were involved on the first stages because we was when they had the injuries, like right. the, the mm, worst ones, no? like, let's say, that needs prosthetics. 
And then we were involved in the last stages when they were thinner, because they, some of, in fact, we did a lot of testing and we're supposed to uh, do a lot of prosthetics for most of the actors, but finally, because they got so thin <laughs> because of the diet they went through, that finally we didn't have to do so much prosthetics. And, uh, Once, I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did a lot of prosthetics, but not for the Everybody's <laughs> on <hub>. that stage. <laughs> and we did like uh, silicone and prosthetic cheekbones, and also they had uh, teeth to make the skull like go for... Uh, yeah, make it more pronounced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. coming out. And then you also did ears, too, didn't you? Yeah, for one of the actors that um, they call uh, ears <laughs> in yeah. the real character because he had a little uh, big ears. So yeah, uh, J.A. wanted uh, this uh, specific uh, thing to recognize more the, that character. And I love the contact lenses. I thought were really yeah, amazing, too, that you know, being able to use those really helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some blood, you know, for the injuries. Yeah, like like hemorrhage uh, yeah, exactly. and so forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. David but was actually there. Actually, in Gustavo was, he was wearing the ears, and he was wearing the, the contact lenses that are like burning corneas, which was like really like, yeah, really effective. Mm. Was there a, a specific stage you found most challenging? I, this is not something. In this movie, I think everything is challenging, and the, the challenge thing is the amazing work that was done by everybody in the movie, because obviously we are here three people, but it's not three people that is making all this stuff. So it's a lot of people working together. And one of the things that is not challenging, it's more like that I found like really uh, nice was that we have uh, Simon, for instance, we have Simon on the chair at the beginning of the, uh, in the morning, and then we put the cheekbones and we put the color of it, and then we give him the teeth, uh, because when he is up there, he has to put his teeth on, because we cannot be a lot of a team up on the mountain. And to put the cheekbones, and then, okay, we say, okay, go to the other chair, and then, uh, Anna, her team, Belen, which is uh, here, uh, uh, hair stylist that is around here, uh, they do and they finish the job that we have started. So th that was the amazing thing in, in the movie. And there was obviously something that were more challenging than other ones, and you know, that, uh, or amazing director, uh, J.A. Bayona, who was asking for more and more things uh, during the, the way of the movie. And I mean, uh, it's a, it was a, a really great journey. And yeah. actually to have so, somebody that is not complaining about the makeup is <laughs> like just saying, put me more, I want more. And it's like, uh, he, they, all of them, uh, they, one of the funny things in, in the Society of the Snow is that a lot of the, the actors, they got thin for the diet and they were enough thin to play their character and J.A. didn't want them to look thinner, like for instance for him. Uh, and then they were chasing us, like, could, could you put some prosthetics on me? Yeah. Could you put something? C can I have teeth? Can I? So that was really, really cute. Yeah. I know at the nominee dinner, I asked Anna about, like, well, look, could you imagine working in those conditions for 12 hours a day? So I was asking, like, how did you get through that? And she so softly said, I didn't notice the conditions. I was just so excited every day to go to work. So that's a compliment to her and her team. All right. All right, everybody, Society of the Snow. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. European. <laughs> well, wasn't that great? You know, we could have done this all day, <laughs> um, which we try to. And, you know, you got our little clock here. And it's like, wrap it up, wrap it up. Um, so listen, um, now, uh, if you saw it when you came up here in the lower lobby, we have uh, some beautiful displays where you can go down. You can uh, see the work that was done. You can meet the artist, maybe ask him a question or two. Um, afterwards, if you're feeling a bit peckish or even now, uh, Fanny's is open um, uh, for a bite or a drink. 
Um, and and you know, look, when you get on go downstairs and you and you hob you know mingle with the crowd here, there are you know uh, you know uh, Oscar winners. There's Oscar nominees, and hopefully uh, within the group here, uh, so many potential future nominees and Oscar winners. So it's a great day. I'm glad. We're very happy everybody came. Uh, don't forget tomorrow uh, uh, to watch the Academy Awards. And, there you go. and don't forget that the clocks uh, leap forward. Um, and we're starting early at 4 p.m. on ABC. Don't miss it. We'll see you downstairs. Yep. Oh, one more thing. Oh, yeah, and, the, and yeah, just regarding Fanny's, go ahead, hit Fanny's, have drinks, have something to eat. And then downstairs, there's another um, drinking cart uh, that popped up because last year it was a little crazy in Fanny's. We want to make sure everybody gets liquor. Yeah, want, yeah, everyone should be drunk as hell here and have a great time. All right. Thanks, thanks guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.